Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're continuing on with music spacing the finale frontier. We are really getting into the deep dark forest here with spacing widths today. So we're going to look at the document options under music spacing, and we're going to go into this little spacing widths window, um, which looks rather unassuming, um, but there's two pieces to it. There's the these values and the spacing width table. We're just going to look at the these values options today, and there's only three of them, but um, it's in concept, it's a little bit easy to understand, but in practice and in the math of it, it is it is rather complicated. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to go into here and we're going to be dealing with EVPUs today because I just think it's a little bit easier uh, to think in EVPUs when you're dealing with this. And the basic premise behind these three uh, um, values here is that Finale is going to allot a certain amount of width to each duration. And the way that Finale calculates this is that it gives you a reference width, and this is somewhat arbitrary, but it's not completely arbitrary. In this case, it's 84 EVPUs, and that reference width is going to be assigned to the reference duration. In this case, 1024 EPUs, not to be confused with EVPUs. Uh, EPUs is just the, um, the numeric value for an actual duration. If you hit the duration button, you'll see that the quarter note is set here. So 1024 EPUs is actually a quarter note. Um, again, so it's uh, basically setting a width of 84 EVPUs for 1024 EPUs or a quarter note, right? And then it's using the scaling factor to calculate the width of all the subsequent um, durations. And basically the way it does this is that for every uh, duration that's double the reference duration, it's going to multiply the reference width by the scaling factor. So 1.6179 times 84 to give you your half note is uh, 136 uh, EVPUs for the duration of the half note. And it works the other way. If you go uh, back to eighth notes, it's basically dividing by 1.674. So you would get 52 EVPUs for your eighth note with this scaling factor of 1.6179. Now it also calculates all the values in between, including the dotted uh, durations and triplets and quintuplets and everything in between. The, I mean, the math here is incredible. I, I spent a lot of time just trying to figure, figure this out um, just to, to find out what, what some of these durations are. And I'm going to show you a, a chart in a second. But um, to simplify this a little bit easier, if I were to set this scaling factor to 1, basically what you're saying is that every duration is going to have a, re a reference width of 84 or whatever you set this reference width to. Again, because it's going to multiply 84 times 1 for the half note, it's going to divide 84 by 1 to get to the eighth note, and all your values are going to end up as 84. If this is actually set to 2, then it's going to double the 84 value, so your um, uh, half note is going to end up at 168, and if you half it, your, uh, ha your eighth note is going to end up at 48. That's with a scaling factor of, of 2. I should mention that the scaling factor value here has to be a number between 1.0 and 2.0. It can't be lower than 1, it can't be higher than 2. So uh, that's just one little um, requirement about the scaling factor number. And so I'm going to put up on the screen hopefully a uh, table that I've created that will show you with the reference duration of 1024 and the reference width of 84 EVPs what the values look like with the scaling factors of either 1 and 2. And you can kind of see the math uh, in, that I did to, in order to get here. Obviously with the, the scaling factor of 1, everything is 84. With the scaling factor of 2, every other box is going to double if you go to the right or it's going to have if you go to the left. And then the values in between for the dotted notes are calculated there as well. Now what Finale sets up out of the box is not 1 or 2, it's 1.6179. And I'm going to show you the uh, the third row here, which will give you the values here. Now 1.6179 happens to be the Fibonacci number. Uh, it is the golden ratio number. Um, if it works in nature, then why not make it work in music? And it's sort of been determined, I think, by people much smarter than me that this value of 1.6179 sort of uh, presents a very pleasing spacing of the music. 
If you see my chart here, you'll notice that the half note is not double 84, but it's closer to, um, you know, two thirds more, I guess, or, or something like that. So uh, the half note would be 136. The quarter note would be 52. And I've calculated all the values going down to uh, 64th notes and all the way up to double whole notes and all of the dotted rhythms in between. And believe me when I tell you that um, the mental gymnastics I had to go through to <laughs> actually get these numbers um, was, was quite something. Uh, I believe that these numbers are correct, but um, I don't know if my formula, was, I think my formula was right, but again, this is complicated math, and I did okay in math, but not, uh, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too great at calculus, so. Anyway, for practical purpose, let's just see what happens. So again, with 1.6179, this is the type of music spacing that you get, but let's see what happens if we set a scaling factor of one. And when we do that, like I said, all of the duration is going to be exactly the same width. So if I just um, music space and then check this out, you'll notice that, you know, your whole notes, your half notes, your quarter, eighths and sixteenth, they all get the same amount of width. If you were to actually measure this um, from note to note, it would be exactly the same. It's 84 EVPUs between each single rhythmic value. So that's why you probably don't want to set it like this because this isn't exactly um, nice to look at. Uh, let's set it the other way. So let's go in here and set the scaling factor to two. And again, what this is going to do is it's going to give um, each um, the next larger uh, or the next the next larger value. It's going to give twice as much space or half as much space if you go the other way. If that makes sense. So um, two half notes is going to equal exactly the same width as uh, a, a whole note. And uh, your quarter notes are going to be exactly half the width of a half note, etc. Your sixteenths are half the width of a eighth note, etc. So this will give you very precise spacing in that regard. Um, and in fact, I believe the measure widths actually end up being very similar. They're not quite exactly the same, and there's a, a sort of a reason for that, which I'll explain in a minute. But um, ultimately, this will uh, create measures that are much more uniform in width. Um, but again, not all that pleasing. There's way too much space allotted for the whole note here, so it's not exactly ideal. Anyway, it has been sort of determined, I think, that 1.6179 is really kind of the, the best uh, starting place at least for this type of music spacing and you can see that essentially what it does is it, it provides you just a little bit less allotment for the larger durations than for the uh, smaller durations so that they're not so cramped and all that stuff but you know the important thing to kind of know about this is that um, if you change the scaling factor number if you make this smaller uh, it will have the effect of evening out the distances across the durations. Obviously, if you put it at one, all the durations will be exactly equal. Um, and if you increase this number, you're going to have the effect of making the differences between the widths more noticeable. So you can do this to an effect. Like, you know, I wouldn't recommend going down all the way down to one or all the way up to one or all the way up to two. But if you set the scaling factor at, say, 1.4, um, you'll see that. Uh, you'll get a slightly different uh, situation where you know you're allotting a little bit more space for your 16th notes and your uh, whole notes and everything are getting a little bit less space, right? If you were to go the other way and set it closer to 1.8, you're going to sort of have the opposite effect uh, in that you know your your smaller values values are going to get much more compact uh, relative to your longer values. So. Again, I, you know, small adjustments I think can be made to this if you're not completely happy with 1.6179 scaling factor here. But uh, you know, like I said, use this um, uh, sparingly. I wouldn't go too far in either direction on this scaling factor number. So let's just go ahead and um, redo this so we go back to how it is set up normally. So what would be the effect if you left the scaling factor where it is, but you changed either the reference duration or reference width? Well, that's a good question. Let's start with the reference duration. Of course, we don't have to use the quarter note to be the duration that gets the uh, width of 84 EVPUs, right? We can change this to something different. And uh, just by going in here, we can set it to the eighth note, for example, to get a reference duration of 512. With a reference width of 84 and the scaling factor still at 1.6179, you can see in the next row, 
um, what you'll get is basically the same type of proportions, just everything shifts over to the left a little bit. So, you know, your eighth note will get a uh, 84, your quarter note will get 136, whereas before your uh, half note was getting 136. So the proportions remain the same. And actually, if you keep going to the right and keep going to the, to the left, um, you'll see that the values are kind of just offset by two. Um, so the proportions are the same. However, what's different, you're still going to get a different result. And actually, if I go in here and music space everything, um, just watch how everything changes around a little bit, it definitely does change. And you might be confused by this because you're saying, well, the relationships between the durations are the same. Why would it actually change the spacing? Well, it gets a little complex here because when it adds the values, it's not only adding the value of the uh, durations themselves, but it's also taking into effect everything, including like the width, right? So the, the, the note heads themselves actually have a width. It's one space, which is about 24 EVPUs. There's also a width value at the beginning of the measure that's calculated. Um, and so when you're changing which note values have which um, widths, um, basically, if you, you make the eighth note the, uh, the reference value, then all of the durations become larger in width, and the, those durational widths proportionally become bigger than the width of the uh, note heads, if that makes sense. So it's not exactly the same because, you know, you have to add, if your eighth note um, EVPU width is 84, you have to consider 84 plus 24, right? And 84 plus 24 is going to be different than, uh, say, 52 and 24, which is how it would be if the quarter note was uh, the reference duration. Does that make sense? So there are some fixed width values that are calculated in this and because um, those those widths are fixed you can't you're not actually changing the proportion of the width of the um, uh, the note head for example uh, it's it kind of changes the math and it, it produces different results in terms of the full um, width of the measure and as we know when you know when fa finale calculates this width, it kind of has to force justify and then it assigns sort of a percentage to each one of these measures and so it gets to a different value. So if I just undo this again, you'll see that it will go back to um, the way it was. So it gets a little complicated, but there are sort of fixed width items that are also calculated in here. And especially when you get into things like uh, adding accidentals, you know, the accidentals have a width. There's a width between the accidental and the note head. The note head itself has a width. So it's not like the um, uh, you know, the durational width between the first note and the second note is fixed in every measure. It's, it's going to be different uh, depending on what's there. There could be accidentals, there could be seconds involved, there could be um, lyrics or chords. So all of this stuff is factored in and most everything uh, is a fixed value except the duration. So that's why changing the, uh, the reference duration is not uh, going to give you precisely the same result if you don't change the scaling factor or the reference width, right? Is that kind of uh, clear as mud? It works the other way too. You know, if you were to set the, the reference duration to half notes, um, you'll see in the fifth row, I believe, I have the, um, the reference uh, duration there boxed uh, where the half note column is, and that's set to 84. Um, and again, the proportions going left and right in that chart are still the same, but because of all of those uh, fixed width values, um, the proportions change uh, immensely, right? Now the 24 um, EVPU width of the uh, note head itself is much less proportionally to um, the value of the, or actually it's much more proportionally in value to the, um, the, the 16th note durational width, if that makes sense. The thing that's sort of ultimately useful to know about this is that if you change the reference duration to be a larger value, in this case I have it set to the half note value, um, essentially you're going to spread out your, your shorter durations a little bit more, just like you just saw. If you set it to a smaller duration like eighth notes, uh, it's going to have the opposite effect where your smaller durations are going to get less space and your larger durations are going to get more space. So that's actually one way to um, achieve this uh, result. Um, again, you can change, you can sort of achieve the same thing uh, futzing with the scaling factor as I had mentioned previous, but um, also changing the reference duration is a way to do this. Now, one place where this is actually kind of useful, and 
I have to say this was a bit of an, an aha moment for me because, you know, studying music spacing in Finale is relatively new when I started uh, working on these videos. So um, what I realized is that when you have uh, two lines like this and one's in 3-4 and one's in 3-8 with exactly the same music, right? Except that the durations are different, right? So instead of a dotted half note, I have a dotted quarter. Instead of quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, I have eighth, sixteenth, eighth. The, the relationship between the rhythms are exactly the same. But you can see that with the music spacing, it actually is different, right? So there's way more space allotted to the 32nd notes. Um, a lot less space allotted to the quarter notes. Again, this all has to do with the relation between the, the fixed width items uh, versus the durational values, right? And this is uh, set the way that the, so that the quarter note is the uh, reference duration. However, if I go in here and change the reference duration to eighth note, all right, and I'm just gonna choose the last system here and just respace that one, you'll see what happens is that all of a sudden um, the, the note spacing looks exactly the same as it does in 3-4. This I think is a little bit more desirable and it does kind of make a lot of sense when you think about it um, to set the reference duration based on the denominator of your time signature is gonna give you a, a little bit better result because you're not counting on a duration to reference that's not even sort of part of the, the beat structure of this time signature. Um, again, it has, just has to do with the fixed width values versus the durational space versus how it calculates the, the width and, you know, force justifies and all that stuff. So uh, this is just a lot to say that when you do space music in a time signature such as 3.8, especially when it's being used uh, in sort of the simple meter sense, like this is not a compound 3.8, this is, you know, three individual eighth notes uh, per measure, um, it's much better to set the, re um, the reference duration to the to the value of the uh, meter. Now, if you're doing things with compound meters, by the way, like let's say you're spacing six eight or twelve eight, it can actually be even better to set the reference duration not to eighth notes, but actually to dotted quarter notes, because that's usually how you set up your compound meters anyway. So, um, you know, for twelve eight, actually setting the reference duration to dotted quarter notes actually gives you a little bit better result. So. Yeah, this was a bit of an aha moment. I never realized that this was actually um, uh, a good thing to do. I mean, I, I think I realized it was possible, but I never really understood um, the rationale or, or the, the value of it. But you, as you can see, when you do it this way, um, the, the spacing of the 3-8 measures when the eighth note is the reference duration is actually much better. So uh, there you go. Now let's say we want to uh, go into the spacing width again. Let's actually set this back to quarter notes. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's just reset everything back to normal. Uh, respace. Let's go over to my other uh, systems here. The other thing we can change in the spacing widths, uh, these values option is the reference width. So if we leave the scaling factor and we leave the reference duration, what happens if we change the reference width? Well, I'm going to put up two more uh, rows to this uh, chart here. I'm going to show you what happens if you double the reference width to 168 or half it to 42. And again, you can see in the table that, you know, if you go to the right, um, I'm still using the scaling factor of 1.6179. So my multiplication, uh, you know, for the half note is going to be 1.6179 times 168. That's going to give me 272. Going the other way to the eighth note, I'm going to get 104. Um, and if I uh, set the... Uh, reference width to 42, which is half of the normal 48, you know, eighth notes are going to be 26, uh, half notes are going to be 68. Again, the proportions are the same, but because the um, the durational widths are, are still being calculated alongside some of the fixed value widths of the, the note heads and the accidentals and all that stuff, you are going to get different um, results. So let's just see what happens if we set this to 168 and click OK and check the music uh, spacing option here. You'll see that, again, um, the 16th notes got a little bit tighter. We're getting, getting a little bit more space to the, um, to the whole notes, which is actually a similar effect if you were to uh, simply leave the, the reference width and actually change the scaling factor to be a little bit larger, right? If we go the other way, let's say uh, we set this to 42, 
and respace. The opposite's going to be uh, the opposite's going to happen. You're going to have less room for your whole notes and half notes. Uh, your sixteenth notes are going to get a little bit more um, uh, durational width. So again, this is going to be similar to the effect you would get if you were to actually change the scaling factor uh, to a smaller value, right? So changing the reference width can also um, have an effect on the music spacing. And again, it's all relative. You know, the thing about this whole thing is it's all relative to the fixed width items, right? It's like the accidentals, um, the note heads, the seconds, you know, if there's lyrics or chords involved, um, it, it all it all plays into it. I, I mean, I could I could continue to do the math, but I think at a certain point it, it doesn't become all that helpful. But, um, you know, just so you know that the effect that can that can occur um, when you change the reference width uh, larger or smaller. Basically, as the reference width gets larger, the measure widths become more unis uniform. As the as it gets smaller, the measure widths become uh, more severely different. So that's that's kind of what's going on there. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And you know, basically, when you have the these values checked, um, again, you're you're taking a reference width and a reference duration and using a scaling factor to determine every single width of every single duration. And in a way, it's sort of fixed. Um, for, so, for example, if you're if you for some reason wanted to give your half notes specifically a little bit more space than what would be calculated by the scaling factor, that's not possible. It's it's basically fixed. And Finale will take this scaling factor and calculate every single rhythm that you can imagine. So not only the dotted rhythms, but triplets and quintuplets and septuplets and everything in between. Um, it does some crazy math to, to find out the precise uh, EVPU value of every single uh, duration. However, with the using the spacing table, uh, the spacing width table here, and going into here the, with this duration allotment window, we can actually set the spacing width of every single duration that we want, and that's where we're going in the next video. Um, it gets super super complicated, but this will allow you to actually change the uh, scaling factor in a way as you get into different durations. So if you wanted the scaling factor to sort of decrease as you went to higher durations, but, but increase as you went to shorter durations, um, you could actually use a spacing width table to do that. And as complicated as the math is for these values, um, it gets super complicated for the spacing width table. So that's what's on deck. Next, um, I hope you can, in, you can join me for that. And we're going to have an interesting look at uh, what's in the spacing width table um, uh, option here for the spacing allotments. So, all right. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully you've followed all of this. Uh, it was, it's a little bit tricky to understand. Um, it took me a while to wrap my head around this stuff. And uh, I'm glad I did, though, because, again, there are certain scenarios like this one right here where I think it's really cool that you can, you know, if you just know to set the reference duration to eighth notes here, it's very easy to change this and make this look a lot better um, for these, uh, you know, the smaller uh, time signatures like this. So um, that in itself is is definitely worth the um, worth the trek down this uh, down this path. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on. Um, I hope this has helped. Uh, my name is Jason. As always, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, come back and we will uh, take a look at the space, the duration allotment window next. Uh, so, yeah. All right. I will see you soon on the next video.